Welcome to the Quiet Warrior Show, where we help top leaders find their pathway to incredible success and a lifetime of happiness. Here is your host, Tom Dutta, the Quiet Warrior. All right, everybody. My name is Tom, and I am the host of the Quiet Warrior Show. I got to tell you, I'm trying something different today. I'm standing up, man. I'm standing up. They say when you're standing up, more oxygen goes to the brain. And, well, we're in a world where we've been sitting down too much. And so welcome. A couple things about what we're doing here. This is a live stream. And if you don't know what a live stream is, well, we're live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Now, if you want to find that, you want to go to the feeds of Tom Dutta. In particular, to go to my YouTube channel, click the button to subscribe. Because in the future, this will be produced into a YouTube premiere video. And also, it will be produced as an international podcast. So you want to find The Quiet Warrior Show on your favorite podcast channel and subscribe. We're live streaming, which means we're in studio and you're peeking in as we're taping, bloopers and all. And this will be the raw footage that we'll use for those productions. I'm pretty excited about this show. We're approaching the 200 episode mark. It was a dream. I didn't ever think that I'd get there this fast. And I'm honored each time I have a, a new guest on with an epic story. And so I'm going to bring him on the screen. Uh, Mr. Paul Henderson is in the green room. Paul, welcome to the show. <laughs> hey, Tom. How are you today? Hey, good, brother. I got to tell you, I have this sense of humor. And I read in your bio somewhere about humor. When I, when I saw the word Henderson, I kept thinking about that movie, Harry and the Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to tell everybody about the greatness behind you, man. There's a stock ticker on the screen there. We can see that. Uh, everyone, Paul is a sports chaplain. I've got to find out more about that, man. He is an author, a new author, releasing his first book, uh, Slave No More, and we're going to hear more about that for sure. And a speaker, former track and field athlete at Virginia Commonwealth University. If you want to check out a great blog, Fatherhood on the Fly, uh, this is where learning, growing, getting better one day at a time for fathers what I love about this man is he has a passion to mentor other dads, and he has a tribe. He's married to Kiera, and they have four sons, PJ, Joey, David, and Noah. And, of course, he uses humor and all his old tricks to drive that wonderful family. And the show art, Paul, that I created, people will see it. Uh, that has a beautiful picture of your family, man. So thanks for sending that. Last thing I want to say is how did we meet? We have a mutual ally, the Morgan James Publishing Group in New York. And I'm blessed to know you through that connection. So let's get into it. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, you're uh, somewhere in Virginia? Yes, sir. I'm in, I'm in uh, Richmond, uh, Richmond, Virginia. I'm originally from the Tidewater area, the, the Hampton, Hampton Roads area. I lived in Hampton and South um, growing up and came to college at, at Virginia Commonwealth University. And I've been in Richmond ever since. That's fantastic. Well, as you know, I'm on the west coast of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, right up north from you. And we have a Richmond, British Columbia. So there's another little thread in our stories. But, Paul, this is all about the hero's journey. We had a back and forth that I love a lot of what you're doing. And I want to get into your story. I want to go deep. So take us back. What you're doing today is amazing, inspiring people, and how you arrived there. But we learned from the back story. Take us back to the beginning. I mean, you were born one day. Take us into the journey from there. Sure. So, um, you know, as Tom mentioned, I have, I have four sons, and um, uh, <laughs> I, I feel that's, that's part of my legacy. I'm actually the second of six sons. I have, I have five brothers and, you know, an athletic family. Both my parents were, were athletes. My mom actually played some college basketball. So I definitely grew up in a competitive household. And, um, you know, it's, you know, raised uh, raised in church. My parents did their best to, to raise my, my brothers and I with, um, you know, with character, and they taught us a lot of different things. And, you know, I went on to college to run track and field, um, to run track and field there, and then, um, and actually had my master's in teaching. So I thought I wanted to teach, uh, you know, but shortly after I was uh, approached by, we call it a sports ministry, if you will, and they approached me about coming on staff with some of my, my uh, background as an athlete and also working with, uh, you know, being a student leader within that sports ministry, you know, while I was on campus. So I actually took that path and I, I did that. Um, I, I did that for, for, for eight years. And, and, you know, what's funny, Tom, is um, I jokingly said to some of the college athletes that I was working with um, that, you know, I have my, I'm, a, I'm a big NFL fan, a big football fan. 
And I remember saying one day to some of the college athletes, I said, you know what, if I ever, uh, my dream job would be to do the, the, the pregame chapel service for my, for my favorite NFL team. And then within, within a couple of years, I was actually able to do the pregame chapel, you know, for, for that <laughs> NFL team. So, um, yeah, so wow. that's, that's, that's a little bit yeah. about me. And I can kind of get into what happened after that. That's where um, that yeah. career part was uh, started. Wow. Being. Hey, Paul, thank you. First of all, we honor you for sharing that uh, early part of your life. I was making some notes here on my paper. If you're listening to the podcast when this comes out, everyone, you can't see that. I have five brothers, man. That's amazing. <laughs> all of a sudden, I started thinking about Michael Jackson there. Uh, <laughs> I think it's amazing that you had a mom who was athletic, college basketball, I'm married to a lady named Anna, and she comes from a, a family of athleticism. And uh, dude, when my, my daughter was born, anyone who sees athleticism in her, uh, I say, look at mom. <laughs> so on my side of the family. Uh, you mentioned an interesting word. I want to use it as a teaching moment on the show, and that's the word character. The character, I teach that a lot in the work I do. And I have to fall down a lot in my life to discover I had a flaw in my character from the early part of my life. My understanding of character is, you, you, you know, to understand who I am, my strengths, my natural limitations. And last thing I'll say on that to you, man, is they're saying now, Reacher says that people will be measured, especially in business, they'll be measured on character, not just skills. So that's pretty cool. And you got into ministry. Uh, that's interesting in itself. I always say, Paul, that when we take the hero's journey, we take a turn into something. There's got to be that something in our gut, that burning desire, that reason that we went seeking. Uh, so let's get into the next part of your story. I've read a little bit about it, but you know, success isn't just a straight line up. So there's some there's some there's some shiitake out there. I'm sure you want to talk about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, my, my ministry position was a self-funded position. So uh, the organization uh, didn't pay me. You had to go out there and raise money. And and, I, and I'm so thankful for my, you know, my supervisor. You know, at, at the time he, he was he was very helpful um, in that regard. And you know, we still have a great relationship to this day. He actually did the interior artwork for my for my book. Uh, so we have a great relationship. But um, it's funny. I was reviewing my my journal. Um, I found my journal doing some cleaning up um, recently about five years ago and around around that time and this was you know six years ago i did that that team chapel service for that nfl team and then the next year you talk about the hard stuff coming i mean it came hard it came it came fast and i, I remember i'm um, doing a lot of fundraising and I, I had my my board in my living room with all the names and business and churches that that i was calling but the funding i mean it, it, was, it was coming in but not enough to be able to sustain my job and i remember having a big banquet that year and um i, I thought we had great guests invited and they, and they were great guests and and but quite honestly with what that ministry position needed that banquet did not cover um it, it didn't cover my expenses in order to to see me be able to continue the ministry um but i wasn't able to, to completely see that maybe it was time for a turn so so, so what happened was about a, a month later, I'm working a, a camp and I'm working with the college athletes from all over the state of Virginia, training them. Um, now, I, I think, you know, the feedback that I got is we, we, we provided a lot of value to a lot of college students and, and helping them use their gifts, their talents, their position to pour into the high school and middle school students from across the state. But in the back of my mind, you know, and talking with my wife, we were thinking about this funding and like, how are we going to continue this, this awesome ministry? Now, my wife, you know, I think she knew that it was time for a turn, but for me, I was just so deeply embedded into this position that I said, you know what, I'm going to keep fighting, I'm going to keep um, doing what I can to, to, to continue this position. But Tom, one thing I didn't realize was that position was starting to be my identity. That position was starting to be my identity. So I, I didn't realize that. So I'm going to meet with my supervisor after camp. And, I, and all of a sudden, I remember exactly where I was driving. And, and and I just said a prayer and I said, God, like, who, who am I? I'm starting to feel unsettled about this position that I've held for the past eight years. Um, but, but God, who, who do you say that I am? And I heard this. I, I, I feel like I heard a quiet voice say that, Paul, you're my son, you're Kiera's husband, and you're a father to your sons. Now, I didn't hear anything about ministry. I didn't hear about think about minister or an influence or anything. And it was at that moment, about five years ago this week, 
that I realized that I was so wrapped up in that position that I lost sight of, of who I was. My identity was in a position, not in who God, who God created me to be. Well, that, thank you for sharing that. There's so many things in that part of your story. I just want to go through and go deep on it for some teaching moments. I, I was, I've always wondered, and you know, I, I, I talk about this publicly now that I was in denial of the word faith. And my show is not a, a denominational show. And I've been in business for 30 years as an executive. And, you know, people don't talk about their faith a lot. But what I realize is that almost all the leaders I know have some form of faith. They, they pray. I know leaders are going to board meetings. And the night before, after I talked privately with them, said, you know, I prayed the board would accept this business plan. I have met people who have lost children or perhaps even had trauma from their past that they hadn't resolved and you know they found faith uh, i want to tell you uh, as you might know i suffered a concussion three years ago paul my life stopped i'm lucky i'm alive because of the way i fell and i started watching the morning faith based show with my wife and i wear this little cross now on my neck and i started praying a lot because i couldn't find my way what i discovered though is that what was unresolved from my early years was part of that uh, so let's put the spotlight back on you. I wrote down here my my identity, the great Paul Henderson, who am I? I loved how you said that you were in this position uh, and you forgot your identity. And I'll give it back to you on this and then we'll keep going. Uh, one of the things I learned is that there was a word called significance that didn't belong in my vocabulary. I have to be the C-level guy. I have to have the biggest paycheck, the status. Love, word love, gratitude, even faith wasn't in there. And so I was defining myself, Paul, on all this stuff and the status. And what I really realized, it was because of the, the lack of the love of my father who left when I was young. I still see you. So let's, what was your sucker punch? What was your gut punch? What caused you to go seeking and say, you know what? This isn't my identity. And, and speak in your faith to find out who you really were. What was, what happened? And then take us forward how you kind of, dealt with your mess and, and, and sorted all that out. Yeah, well, you know, I look at that moment and, you know, a lot of this happened, it was July 22nd of 2016. And I, and I read through that, um, I read through that journal entry and I was just quite honestly, I was reminded of not just my perceived failures, because one thing I specifically wrote is have I failed in this ministry because I had trouble supporting myself. But there was something else that I wrote, Tom, I, I was really concerned about my, about b about my character, you know, about about my character. Um, I began to question, you know, my myself in re in regards in regards to my marriage. You know, I, you know, around that time, I was I was struggling in my marriage, but it wasn't, you know, as out front, and it wasn't being dealt with as you know as as, as it should have been. And um, man, I tell you what, the next year, the next year, the next twelve uh, twelve months were were hard um, because, because my identity was so wrapped up in that position, the things that were deeper inside me, if you, you know, some people might call it the muck, you know, if you will, um, <laughs> in my life, it, it was covered, but it needed to become uncovered for me to become the man that, you know, I believe that God wanted me to be. So I, I ended up leaving FCA and, and, I, and I, began, I began searching and um, I ended up taking a job as a teacher at a um, at a alternative school, so 2015 October, I'm speaking in front of millionaire these millionaire athletes from my favorite team. October the following year, I'm at an alternative school in the middle of the woods with kids that did not respect me, that called me everything but my name, that were throwing and stuff. And I mean, every day I didn't know if they were trying to hit me or if you know, <laughs> day or this, you know. And I'm like, this last year. My favorite NFL team is coming up to me, shaking my hand, telling me about the value I'm, I'm putting, um, I'm part into their life. One year later, you know, I'm halfway nervous to go to school because I don't know what's going to happen that day. You talk about a humbling experience, Tom. I mean, it was, it, it was, it was rough. It, it was rough, and it was during that time that God was really beginning to work some things in me. Um, my personal life was put on front street. You know, things that may have been been hidden. You know, I begin to share those with, with trusted people who begin to walk with me. My, my marriage was on the rocks. I, my wife and I, we had two children. She was pregnant with the third. And then on top of that, that, that January, Tom, the school shut down. That campus shut down due to funding. So I, I lost my job. 
Well, I mean, it's like what what more what more could go wrong? <laughs> you know, yeah, I have two kids, a, a pregnant wife who's not too fond of me. You know, at at, at this moment, and then I, I, I lose my job. On top of that, I lose my insurance. How are we going to deliver this baby? How are we going to pay for it? You know, um, but it was during that time I really began to see. Okay, God, you really have a purpose for my life, and it was beyond that position. It was something deeper. It was it was something deeper, and I had to learn how to love myself. I had to learn how to truly love my wife, love my love my children. And it, it, you know, it's amazing during that time of, of being out of work and, and suffering these tough things. The reconciliation that my wife and I experienced was absolutely amazing. We became closer and closer than never before and thankfully ever since then our our marriage is is this this is this is actually we're coming up on 10 years this october um so it's, that's that's definitely been a, a, a nice turnaround but it took some of those hard things in order for us to yeah. to really get to that turnaround well man we're gonna make this uh tribute to your your wife it's kiara did i say that right yes kiara yes yeah. where, where did you two meet we, we actually we actually met at um at, at our church our, our former church wonderful God puts us in places for a reason. Uh, going back to NFL before I, I riff on a few things you said, so fascinating that part of the story. What team was it? <laughs> you have the, the. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it was so the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. All right. Sweet. Big fan of uh, all the NFL. I mean, we're over here in the border, right? So the CFL. I mean, we like to say we have a, a pig shaped football, and yours is funny looking. <laughs> uh, Seattle Seahawks. I've driven my boys down. My my two stepsons are older now to the stadium, you know, uh, just love the sport. And there's a thread there. My father was a big uh, CFL fan. And, uh, you know, they, the British Columbia Alliance uh, uh, won a couple of great cups. And I remember sitting on a hard wooden bench in the stadium, freezing cold, my dad drinking beer, and that's watching mm -hmm. his sport. It's one of the memories I have with him after he certainly passed away a few years ago. I, I was thinking about that. And uh, I was also thinking about something that uh, I met an NFL player before, uh, uh, Kerry Carter, who played for the Seahawks. And he also came into Canada and played up here. He's a guy that if you haven't met him, uh, I'd like you to meet. And he had a story too, and he went through a bit of a journey. And it's funny, but I learned, I learned from many of the NFL or many of the guys in sports that many of them had broken lives and they came into sports and they were, they were searching and seeking. Uh, so to have you, even be in your ministry and working with that tribe for a while. I think that I honor you for that. I kind of smiled at the part about the marriage and the struggle. First of all, uh, honor you for the vulnerability to do that on the uh, show live. It's, uh, it takes a lot of courage. And so our threads are the same. I mean, my wife and I have gone through some of the trials, marriages and all straight up. What I love about how you found yourself, became a teacher, uh, I smiled again at that part of your story, Paul. I call it stripping, but I went through that in a different way, but it focusing on you. I would like to say, and I wonder what you think about it, that sometimes God looks at us and says, you know, you need to learn more. You need to okay. strip you of some things. Absolutely. And you did, there you were, and he threw you in a classroom, and you were being treated like that's the real world. You know? You're yeah. not getting shaken hands, shaking hands. It's like the ego and all that stuff. And all of a sudden, you're waking up to discover something by yourself. I really honor that. I wanted to ask you about the the Bible and just comment on this for a minute when I give it back to you that as I started believing in my faith, uh, I learned from my teachings anyway that the Bible, it's really a story. It's a series of books, but it's a, besides accepting faith in my life and, and saying, God, take my life and do what you can with it, you know, you're on it. It was uh, I sort of would read chapters in it. It would help me understand how to behave, how to be loving, how to be kind. And I didn't understand that from where I came from because of my father's nature. Uh, how much did the Bible play in bringing back together your understanding of how to you know, love yourself, your children, and your wife? What about that helped you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there, There is one verse in... Um, it's, it's Ephesians chapter two, verse 10. And it said, it talks about how, um, how we're God's masterpiece and how we're, um, you know, he created us to do 
you know, things for us long ago. And I'm sure I'm sure I butchered the verse. Uh, but my old supervisor, Mike, he, he would he would always say that when I was in FCA, when I was um, you know, as a student athlete, and then also when I was working with him as a staff member, he would he would always say that that was a verse that had an impact in his life. And it was during it was during that time, Tom, where that first began to mean so much to me because I had to learn how to see myself as as God saw me. So you have to follow me here. When I begin to see myself as God saw me, I begin to place more value on my life. You know, my life began to be more valuable because um, I heard I heard a quote by um, author, speaker, minister, Alice Monroe. And one, one thing he says is that um, if you don't know the purpose of something, it, abuse is inevitable. Or if, if you don't understand the purpose of something, you, you'll, you'll abuse it. So what, what happened, Tom, is I didn't understand God's understanding. I, I knew some of the verses, but I, they weren't as close to my heart as they should have been. I hadn't accepted them as I should have. The verses that would talk about the purpose for my life. So I, I what ended up happening, and part of the reason I struggled in my marriage is because I, the purpose that God had for my life wasn't as close and that wasn't as embedded as my heart as they should have been. So I began to make abusive decisions to myself, <laughs> if you will. You know, abuse of the system to myself, which in turn affected my wife and affected my family. And um, it's amazing how, but when I begin to, the, the, that, that turnaround and I, I begin to really understand that, hey, I am God's masterpiece. I am valuable. You know, my life does have purpose. You know, God does have a plan for my life to, to give me a hope in the future. When I begin to believe, you know, those verses that I knew for so long, and they begin to be more embedded in my, in my heart. Man, my life just began to change, and, and it, it, it went from knowing it up here to knowing it here in the heart. Yeah, that's amazing, man. I'm getting so deep into that story, and so you know me, uh, the Quiet Warrior Show is about going deep. I, I always ask myself, especially through what I went through, and I ask everybody this: when when we have difficulty in our marriage, I mean, I remember my first marriage didn't work for seven years. I, I it was after I reflected, it was a lot about me, not about my partner. Uh, what was what were you doing to 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 have your uh, your great Carol struggle with you? What was one thing? Was it arrogance? Was it uh, you know who knows? Just give me an example. What did it look like? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, arrogance, um, um, selfishness. Uh, you know, you know, being called to speak in, at all these different schools and. Um, you know, Paul Key can speak here. Paul Key can speak there. And while while we have we have a wife and two children at home, you know, I, I begin to see myself as higher than, than than what I what I should have seen myself, you know. But then, uh, being that I value, and, and this is a lot of what my my book, you know, is is about, if you will. Um, I, I value myself so much, and I place so much value in what others thought of me. I was a slave, if you will, of what others thought of me. So, if I if I were to struggle or or be in um what's the word uh, um insecure about what others thought of me, man, it could it could lead me down just a a, a bad path. You know, yeah. my my internet search history ended up not being clean. I was, yeah. I would say that, and that was something that my wife had my wife and I we had to work through, and we had people in our lives. You know, I, I ended up being upfront with her, and then we also had people in our lives that help to mentor us and walk through us um, in order to reconcile along that path. That's amazing, man. I just did a, as you might know, a TED talk. And uh, when I had my fall and my injury, the, the brain injury, uh, one of the things I, I unraveled was a lot about my past. And my father was a, a, a addiction, addicted to alcohol, a commanding officer in the military. So that was sort of the way I grew up. But I remember saying in that talk, there was a line that many of us hide uh, Many of us don't want people to find out about the demons in our heads, so we, we turn to booze, drugs, porn, whatever we can find, because that's the rush. That makes us feel good. My story is, and, and yours, I'm getting so clear. I always ask myself, and I learned this through my own development, that we come into the, somebody told me once that we come into the world, and in the womb, we have everything. We're ultimately happy. We have safety, we have food, we have mom, the heartbeat. And then we come out, and we, all of a sudden, we, we start, that changes. We start wanting stuff and we start comparing to others. And you know, maybe we look back at our childhoods and see parents who were very successful in some ways. And you know, maybe the things in our head 
make us feel that we're not worthy, we're not enough. For me, it was really my dad expected straight A's, perfection, you know, my chores. I had a long list of chores when my buddies were playing street hockey. And it's like if I didn't make the honor roll. But the only time I got attention from my father was when I did all these high-performing things. So guess what, Paul? I went into the real world and I drove success, CEO, you know, awards, uh, and I became arrogant and started people started seeing me as it's all about you. What 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 was that one thing, that chip on your shoulder that you think made you feel that you weren't loved, you weren't worthy, that made you look for it somewhere else? Yeah, uh, I, I, like like yourself, um, you know, I, I dealt with that as well with, with, with my father. Um, yeah. I, I really did, and I don't. I don't think it was intentional on on his part. But you know, um, you know, my, my my older brother, you know, who I love. I love all. I love all of my brothers. My older brother, man, he, he's a he's a military guy. Went they went to Naval Academy. He's an officer in the Navy. You know, I really appreciate his service to the country. Um, you know, and, and what he's done and, and having to leave his family for so long. But the reality is, I was only one year younger than him. <laughs> so, <laughs> He set some very, very high standards, and a lot of times I, I would see how my how my dad would, would, would talk about, you know, and how how proud he was of, of you know my brother, and um, it, it caused a lot of insecurity w- within me. So anytime I would do something that was seemingly significant, it was almost like I was crying out, saying, "Hey, look at me! I can do something well too." You know, I I, I began to really uh, seek and search for that you know, a, a appreciation, you know, a- admiration, you know, else, elsewhere, you know, rather yeah. than just really having a deep understanding that I'm God's, I'm God's masterpiece. And once again, I don't, I don't think my dad did it on purpose, but, you know, a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot of times, I mean, he would, he would really boost my, my, my brother up and I'm like, I'm one year behind him. <laughs> I, I, I joke with my brothers a lot that um the, the four that are younger than me, I say, you know what, somebody had to lower the bar, so I'm happy to do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing here, man. And uh, first of all, I'm going like, wow, I'm glad I'm standing up this for this episode. All this energy is coming through me. But everybody, that's a teaching moment. Go back to the show, play it over and over. You nailed it. I mean, I wait for a point on my shows where the hero's journey comes full circle and we find that thing. Paul, I, I love you, man. I love this story. But first of all, what you said, so many people who watch this interview will wait for this moment and say, that's, wow, they'll discover that. You see, the thing I learned is up till age 10 or 12, maybe 15, we don't have that rational brain. So everything we hear that said to us is wired in our neural nets. And it's true. A lot of, I'll say now to people that a lot of the stuff that you think about yourself isn't even true. It's put in there by somebody else. I love what you said about your dad. I mean, it took me till my dad died and I made peace with him then. God help you get there. That my dad did the best with the tools that he had. Right. And his dad was a drunk and died and he was, rough house in his life and so he came into my life and that's what he knew until i yeah. learned what a real hero he was uh and they say you must choose wisely i guess that's the old coke commercial that i remember from indiana jones you must choose wisely today what seeds or weeds are we putting in negative positive thoughts uh man you are such a, a hero show us the book cover because i know you're you've ordered your first hundred copies it's a big day when they come uh, tell us the title yeah, so slave no more, conquering the master within, and uh, you know I'm, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of this, and uh, you know part of the backstory is I always knew that I wanted to write. Um, I always knew that, that that I wanted to write, and and what happened was you know that time being out of work time and and my wife and I reconciling and and just coming becoming closer as a family. Um, you know, a couple of months being out of work, I said, hey, maybe now's a good time to actually start writing. So I used that time I was out of work for about a half, about, about you know five or six months, and I used that time to write my book, and um, and and it came from such a deep place of vulnerability, and um, it's inspirational fiction. But for the people that know me, they'll read the 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 main character's storyline. I mean, it's, it's definitely a fictional storyline, uh, but they'll read it. They'll read it and they'll say that reminds me of Paul. Uh, just just a little. We <laughs> took. <laughs> um, some parts of my life and some some struggles that I've had and I and I put them in you know in this uh, the main character the guy who's going through a journey uh, throughout yeah. the book of learning how to be a slave no more. That is so cool. What's the release date on it? The, the release date is uh, 
it's January 4th. And, you know, it, it'll be available, um, you know, for, as an ebook in, in October and it's currently available, you know, you know, for, for, for pre-order. Awesome. So January 4th, 2022? Yes, January 4th, 2022. Yes. Awesome. Well, welcome to the world of authorship, man. Uh, everybody, just uh, so you understand, the, in the word author, authority comes the word author. And uh, Paul is a storyteller. He is a thought leader and sees the world through his own message or his mess that he overcame. And this is a book you need to get. Paul, hold it up again, the, uh, the copy. This is just an image of it. Uh, there it is. It's late no more. You need to go find it. Please order it, pre-order it. And thanks, Paul. We, we also know that when authors write, nobody knows about it. I read somewhere that Bill Flynn's book uh, never sold, and he admitted he didn't tell people about it. You know, he didn't think he had to. But what he wanted to do is you want to honor by giving Paul a review. Book reviews make the authors known. When you get the book, I encourage everybody to write a review. Go to Amazon, wherever you buy it, and there's a way to click the book, write a review. Others will see it. That will help it get in the stores. And also goodreads.com is another area you can go. It's free. Just say something about Paul's book. And Paul, that's going to get the word out there, man. As well as this show, we want everybody to come back and watch it so that we can get your story out there and it can go viral. Uh, I want to ask you one, one thing as we move to a few exciting uh, things to wrap up here. And that is, at this point in your life, when you look ahead, uh, and you're finished with this world, what, what do you want it to look like? And talk a little bit about those beautiful children. We saw the picture in the show art and just, you know, what you're doing to, to teach them to love themselves so they don't fall into that thinking trap of yours. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. So uh, p p picking up, you know, I guess at, towards the, at that time being out of work, uh, there was a lot of reconciliation that took place in the past five years. I tell you what, they, they have been absolutely amazing for my wife and I. Uh, I found myself in, in corporate America and I, I really believe that God just wanted to do, to do more, um, you know, in me there. Um, and some of the, the good things that have happened since then is, uh, you know, one, I, I'm, I'm much more content and I'm confident in, in myself and who God made me as a as a husband to Kira and then also my boys. Um, I'm constantly in, you know, in, in their lives, spending, um, spending time with them while realizing that I don't know everything and I'm okay with not knowing everything. You know, um, I'm okay with apologizing to two of my sons. Um, I, I, I spend time with them. Um, I try to show them better than I believe that I can show them, uh, better than, than I can tell them. Uh, one thing I've learned, and I, I put a, a, um, a quote out there one time that just hit me, is uh, that children are, uh, children are imitators. Therefore, we must live as parents, as adults, we must live lives worth imitating. Uh, so, so one thing that I do is I, I, I strive to live a life worth imitating to my boys, not just telling them what to do. I try to model that for them, and while also letting them know that hey, daddy drops the ball sometimes. Uh, sometimes, um, um, since then as well, uh, you know, Tom, you know, I've I've been invited twice back to speak to the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, on two separate occasions. So that was almost like a, another redemption story after the, the mess that we we <laughs> went through. Um, they, they, they called me back and said, hey, can, can, can you come help us out again? Um, and now I'm, I'm a dean of students at a, you know, at, at a local school. And I have an opportunity to be in a school with, with my oldest two sons. Uh, so That's spending right. time with them is just, is is absolutely great. It's, it's important, it's critical, it's crucial. And I'm, cause I know that's, that's, that's time that we won't get back. And um, but, it, but I always let them know that even if they do mess up, if they're my children, they mess up. I, even though I may be disappointed with the decision, I'm never disappointed with them. I love them, and I want that to be embedded so uh, deeply in them. You just you just got me excited there. I'm just going to point my finger and say, everybody, teaching moment. Listen to that. I learned this through some. Uh, I have to go through cognitive behavioral therapy because of my brain injury, and they said at the end that. Teaching now is shifting, and parent, parents are being taught, by, or children are being taught, and parents to separate behavior from the child. So we grew up by people, like people saying, "Bad, bad, you did this, I don't like," and the child thinks, "And you, you don't like me." Uh, you just nailed it, man. Hey, Paula, I love you a lot, man. But this one thing you did when you threw oatmeal on my face, <laughs> that I don't like that. We got to change that. Hey, everybody, as we're moving to, to wrap up with some exciting announcements here, I see some people on the live stream. You can interact with the host. And if you put a comment up, I can show it on the screen. 
uh, so that we can uh, have some fun sharing with Paul. So give us a few, any comments at all. I'll keep an eye on that. Hey, Paul, I want to honor you as we close here. Hold up the book one more time. Uh, the book cover because it's being released Thank soon. You, awesome. Everybody give it a rating. Go pre-order it so we can honor this man's story. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Paul, where can we get a hold of you and your body of work? I, I did mention the uh, blog, Fatherhood on the Fly. Tell us where else we can get a hold of your stuff. Yeah, so so on, on Instagram is fatherhood underscore on the fly. And that's uh, my Instagram handle. Um, also, my website is paulanthonyhenderson.com. That's paulanthonyhenderson.com. Uh, and then I'm also on Facebook at fatherhood on the fly. Is my um, that's that's where I, I hold a um, a lot of my stuff that <laughs> trans that transitions from Instagram over to Facebook. All right. Well, we have a fan there, man, on you on my YouTube channel, Tim J. May. I don't know if you know who that is, but it's somebody who just posted that and uh, it says 100 percent. We're going to just uh, show that on the screen. So it's captured in the live stream uh, production. Fantastic. Keep those comments coming. We're going to honor you now with uh, a couple of things. First of all, I do these call for every show. They're unscripted. And by the way, everybody, the Quiet War show is not scripted. Uh, we just riff in our brains and we go on a journey. And that's a unique ability I have as a host to bring the guests alive with their story. And Paul's been amazing. Uh, so I'm going to honor you with some leadership words. Paul, number one is faith. Number two is love comes out of you. Number three is teacher, dude. You're a teacher. And number four is you're a leader. And to me, the definition of a leader, I learned this myself the hard way, is the leader's number one job is to create other leaders and to infect those to follow you. In order to do that, you have to be authentic, vulnerable, be real. And you're that, buddy. I wish I'd known you before. Then we can both look at our old selves and say, yeah, that was the, 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 the jerk I knew. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to honor you now with an award. And we're going to induct you into the Quiet Warrior Tribe. So I'm going to be selfish and full screen this. If you're on the podcast, you won't see this. So I'm going to describe it. So, Paul, if you take a look at the backdrop to my screen there, there's a guy I know there. And this is... <laughs> This is a challenge coin. Challenge coins, they started in World War I. They were carried by soldiers, and they were to commit community. So if you and I were in a unit together, we would show up. Maybe you didn't have your coin, and I would say, you got to buy drinks next, man. These were to commit community. Oh, we've got another beautiful comment I'm going to show on the screen here while I'm talking. It's from uh, uh, somebody I think you know, Kiara Henderson. Those were all perfect words for Paul. Thank you, Kira. We, we're going to make you the unsung hero in this story. So going back to the challenge coin, uh, when I started the show, it was really to extend my platform to have people come tell their stories so that we can learn from them and learn that it's okay to say you're not okay and what you overcame and teach us. Uh, the back of the coin is the hero's journey narrative. It's fully illustrated. The front is the Quiet Warrior show emblem. These are hand painted and crafted and minted in the United States. Today, Paul, they're carried in over 14 countries by almost 200 quiet warriors. And by receiving it, you must commit to continuing your purpose of helping others take that action every day to live the life you deserve and desire. So welcome to the tribe, Ed. Thank you so much. I'm honored. I'm honored. It's my honor, dude. And so we'll get your address to somehow get that out to you. We'll be seeing each other. I will make publicly a promise to read and review your book so that we can uh, honor that as well. So everybody, let's get Paul to give us the last word. Anything you want to send us off with, Paul? No, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just thankful, and um, you know, if I can continue to live, live my life in a way that first and foremost pleases God, um, love my wife, love my children, to where my, my wife, my children, and and, and eventually my grandchildren are, 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 are proud to call me, you know, their, their family member, their, their leader, if you will. You know, I think we think we've done a good job. You notice I didn't say anything about those sports teams that I've talked to. <laughs> exactly. I'm more so ex ex um, excited about leaving that legacy with my wife, my children, um, and future grandchildren. That's fantastic. Well, as Jesus Christ had disciples and he taught them to go out and teach how to be, that is that is your tribe. You're teaching them to go and change the world. And I want to leave you with a message before I let you go, Paul, that I love you, man. You're enough. I'm proud of you and the work that you're doing and just know that you were born golden and that's really who you are. So everybody find the Quiet Warrior Show on your favorite podcast channel. Make sure you subscribe to it and go to my YouTube channel, click the button to subscribe to YouTube. This is the live taping. It's the raw uncut footage to be produced into a 
podcast that will be international, as well as a YouTube premiere version where you actually get on a live uh, launch and communicate. Maybe Paul will show up there. That will be released in the, in the future. So thanks, and live that life with passion. Live that life with action that you deserve and desire. Thank you, Paul. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to The Quiet Warrior Show. Create is a motive-based leadership development firm. www.kreat.ca